Good morning, everyone, to a beautiful day here in San Diego, California. So today I'm doing a range test on the Superhuman Baby Maker 2, which is a lightweight road style e-bike that has a single speed carbon belt drive. I'm actually riding from my house all the way to the Superhuman bike shop. It's about 35 to 40 miles, depending on the route that you take. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure which route I am gonna take. So I'm just kind of play it by ear. So what I'm hoping to accomplish with this test is overall comfort, power, and just rideability and quality of the Baby Maker 2 itself. So the plan is to actually check in once in a while, just to give you an update on the comfort level, how the bike rides, and we'll just talk about the bike a little bit. So I'll see you on the first update. So the real question on this ride, more than anything, is, is this bike actually gonna make it to the Superhuman Bike Shop? So the interesting part about this bike on the website is it says that the range is anywhere from 20 to 70 miles, which is a massive variance. So I've been testing the bike about a week and a half, two weeks so far, and it doesn't really surprise me that there is such a huge variance, and here's why. The Zoni is single speed, and there's five levels of assist. So my guess is if you use level five, you're only getting 20 miles. If you use level one, you'll get up to 70. So my plan for the bike today is not to eco the bike out. It's to use whatever assist level makes sense at the time. If I'm going up a hill, we'll increase the assist level. Going down the hill, we'll decrease. So if we can make it, I think it's a win just because there is such a big variance on this. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'm kind of excited about it. So far, I'm already nine miles in and mile 11 check-in. Easy peasy so far. Very, very smooth ride, pretty comfortable. One thing that's actually surprised me is how well the frame actually dampens out the vibrations of the road. So far, so good. So the first thing I want to talk about is one of the two big selling points of this bike, in my opinion, that kind of separates it. So the first one is going to be the carbon belt drive. This thing is lovely and it is buttery smooth. So the first advantage of the carbon belt system is the longevity of the belt itself. So for my understanding, it has a life expectancy of two to three times of a regular chain, which is awesome. Second advantage, is you don't have to put chain loop on it. You just ride the bike and that's it. Super simple, nothing to it. The third big advantage is just the smoothness. It's so crazy how quiet this drivetrain is. I mean, you can't hear anything. It's really, really weird. I like it though. The only positive or negative the way you can look at it on the drivetrain is a single speed. It's a positive in the sense where you don't have to worry about the complexity of having to get it to shift right and all that other stuff. The bad part is, it's one speed. So if the motor isn't able to provide the type of power that you want, then tough luck. So the way the Baby Maker 2 is geared, it has a 63 tooth crank in the front, which is huge, and a 22 in the back. It makes it where the bike's cruising speed is a comfortable 17 to 18 miles an hour. I mean, just super, super easy. So I'm actually a big fan of it. It's a really nice drivetrain, and I don't have any complaints on the drivetrain. I guess if there was one complaint, <laughs> is that uh, really, really steep hills get kind of hard to do. But I don't think this bike is actually designed for stuff like that. This is more like a cruising bike or a commuter, and it does that very, very well. So I'll check in a little bit, and we'll talk about the second biggest selling point on this bike. So next biggest selling point on this bike is the very, very lightweight. So this bike only weighs 35 pounds, which I think is crazy for an electric bike. Now, for a road bike, obviously, that's not that light. Most road bikes are, you know, in the low 20s. But the fact that this thing is so light, and more importantly, it rides like it's light. There's no point having a lighter bike if it feels heavy and sluggish. This bike does not feel heavy or sluggish. It feels light, and it puts power down like a road bike, which is really awesome. All right, 20 mile update. So far, we've climbed almost 400 feet of elevation. But we have come down from the mountains. So we started off at 2,000 feet. We're currently at 400 feet elevation in Santee, California. So, so far performing extremely well. I got down here in an hour and 13 minutes. So I'm averaging almost 18 miles an hour according to the bike computer. So something I wanna talk about is the motor itself. So this is a 350 watt rear hub motor. It is pedal assist only, there is no throttle, which I think is totally fine. It provides ample power. There's five levels of assistance. 
I'll be honest, if you're going over 10 miles an hour, I think that levels one and two, you're really not gonna use. Levels one and two is if you're gonna be under, I don't know, seven miles an hour. Level three is pretty much the assistance that I would stick at if you need assistance cruising at 15 miles an hour or so. And like I said, the power's good. It's not crazy. I think this motor only puts down between 40 and 50 new meters of torque, which doesn't sound like a lot, but this is also a very light bike. Take that to account. But I will say for levels four and five, the bike jumps with speed. That's when it starts putting power down. I'm pretty darn impressed so far with the battery on this bike too. This is a 36 volt, 10 amp hour battery. So it's a very, very small battery and it's doing great. I mean, I'm still at five bars out of five bars on my battery. I think a lot of it has to do with a lot of downhill, but the fact that it's gone this far, I think is kind of crazy. It could be one of those things too, where the first two bars last a really long time. And then the last three bars just kind of empty really fast. I don't know, I guess to find out. I think I only have 15 to 20 miles left to get to the bike shop, which is pretty cool. I'm not really sure which way I'm gonna go. I was contemplating climbing up the freeway. Then I was contemplating going through a park then through uh, El Cajon, which is kind of like a whatever city. So I've decided I'm gonna go through Mission Trails Park because it's so beautiful and I haven't been through it such a long time. And this is really what biking is really about. It's about exploring, just checking cool stuff out and just having fun. So I will give you an update once we put some more miles in. Okay, check in. We're at 27 miles. We've already climbed 800 feet. I'm in my old stomping grounds where I used to live. So what they haven't really done so far in this test is a really, really steep climb. So we're gonna do that right now. <laughs> this is a very, very short but punchy climb. We're gonna go to level five. We're gonna see how this bike handles it. And uh, here we go. Watch out for that car. We're good. Gonna stand on the pedals. 17 miles an hour up the hill. 14. Wow. Very, very good power. What I will say though, is that if you're going up very, very steep climbs in this bike, over 18, maybe 15 degree incline, 15, 20 degree incline, I think you're gonna have to stand up to put down the power. Mind you, I'm not the strongest climber when it comes to bicycling, but I would not want to stay seated while pedaling up a very, very steep hill on this bike. Just to note, the bike can climb a very, very steep hill, at least a very short, punchy one with no problems at all. I think I only have like 13 miles or left to the bike shop. If that's true, according to my GPS, that would mean that we're gonna do 40 miles today. I guess I should also update you that I still have five bars of battery. I don't know how that's really possible, but we'll see what we have in a little bit when I check in again. Okay, so mile 29. So what I wanted to talk about were a couple more things about the bike. <clears throat> Something that's very surprising, at least to me, for a bike at this price, and also for road style bikes, are the brakes on this bike. So typically with road style e-bikes under 1500 bucks or so, you're gonna get mechanical disc brakes. Now there's nothing wrong with mechanical disc brakes, especially if they're good mechanical disc brakes. You know, I don't have an issue with mechanical disc brakes on a road style bike that doesn't weigh that much. But Superhuman went far enough to put hydraulic disc brakes on this bike. The Magura MT30s, and they're fantastic. I like them a lot. They're very, very powerful. Very smooth too. They have a very good anti-lock brake kind of feel, almost like a SRAM brake, if you will. I don't know if they have the, the, the crazy stopping power of Shimano's. They're damn near close, but they definitely have the ABS type feel of a SRAM where you don't lock up the tires. And this bike is running 180 millimeter rotors, both in the front and rear, which is fantastic. Nice big rotors for a bike of this size. So you really don't have to worry about get in trouble if you have to stop in this bike, this bike is set to stop. And the last thing I want to talk about is the aesthetics of this bike. 
I think this is a very, very, very good looking bike. And the best part is it doesn't look like an e-bike. This looks like a road bike. And it's mostly because the battery is so well hidden and the battery is small enough that it doesn't mess with the look of the bike. The only way that you can tell that this is an e-bike is the rear hub motor. Even the way Superhuman routes the bike, all the wires on it, they're hidden. You cannot tell. I've had a couple people come up to while riding this. Uh, I had my dad who's into road bikes a lot. He didn't realize it was an e-bike up until he saw the motor in the, in the rear hub, obviously. So I think that's a, that's, a, that's a big deal for a bike like this. I mean, you know, I think a lot of us like e-bikes. E-bikes are pretty cool, but we don't like the bulkiness of e-bikes. This does not have any bulkiness whatsoever, looks wise, and obviously weight wise too. So probably I can have more updates up until I get to the shop, just because I ran through the bike, um, unless, you know, it starts getting uncomfortable or something. So I will see you at the bike shop. So with about 10 minutes left, I decided to put the power down on my way to the Superhuman bike shop. And since I still had five out of five bars of the battery left, I wasn't worried about running out of the battery. So I decided to only use level four and five power levels so I get to the shop as quickly as possible. Chapter 40.36 miles, we reached the Superhuman bike shop. Feeling pretty good. Um, the bike's at about three bars, so I'm gonna give you my full thoughts in a couple seconds. So here's the final results for the range test. From my doorstep to Superhuman's bike shop was 40.43 miles, and it had 1,224 feet of elevation gain. I completed about two and a half hours, making my average speed 16.1 miles per hour, and my max speed of 32 miles an hour. And when I got to the shop, I had indicated four bars of the battery left, but it would show three bars when I used level five power assist. So based on that, I think it's safe to say that the battery had at least 60% battery left. So overall, I was pleasantly surprised by the Baby Maker too. When I first saw the Baby Maker, I was surprised how sleek it was and how it didn't look like an actual e-bike. My only concern when I started the ride was the smaller battery and if I was actually going to make it to the shop since there was such a wide range in the mileage estimates. But not only did it make it, it was also on pace to exceed the range estimates. So one aspect of the bike that I didn't mention in my updates is that I actually did try pedaling the bike without the motor assistance and it pedals extremely well without the assistance. I didn't do this for very long, but if you do happen to have run out of battery, then pedaling without the motor isn't too bad and it's very doable. But this is a solid electric bike that has a decent amount of power, great range, good climbing ability, sleek looks, and most importantly, it won't break the bank. And with the sub $1,500 electric bike segment increasing, it's sometimes hard for bike companies to separate themselves from the competition. But I generally think that Superhuman has done a great job in the design and build quality of this bike for its segment. And for this price point, it's a hard bike to beat. But if you have any questions about the Baby Maker, or you own a Baby Maker, and want to give your feedback on your ownership experience, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great one.